There's only one mantra that you all need to know. That's that one over there. See Todd, bye Todd. Good afternoon, everybody. It's Monday and it's Where's Coast Avengers? Holy shit, everybody. Special presentation of whatever live show today is because Daniel Warren Johnson's going to be here to talk about the extremity signature edition kickstarter which ends in two days and uh well I'll, I'll save the fanfare and the talk about it uh for when dan is here which will be shortly he's scheduled to be here in about nine minutes but i figured i go live a little bit early say hello to my friends uh jeremy's in the house what's up jeremy rob mccallum in the house hey pre-code thing in the house hey joe scar in the house Big bad Joe Scar. If you don't know Joe Scar, Joe Scar designs everything that goes on this channel. Thumbnails, graphics, t-shirts, sequits. So uh, if you need something designed, Joe's your guy. Scar System on Instagram. Or you could just get in touch with me and I'll put you in touch with him. Zach's in the house, Prince of Cheese. Man, we do need a little bit of levity today. We need some nice people in the chat. We need some really good comic creators to talk to. And honestly... You know, if you don't know Dan, DWJ, D-dubs, he is like one of the greatest creators currently making comics right now, but he's also a fantastic human being, a nice guy. He has his own YouTube channel, which is uh, at Daniel Warren Johnson one, you can find the link in the description. Uh, it's, it should be like uh, hyperlinked. So you should, um, you should subscribe to his YouTube channel because he does a Friday show called uh, Friday with D-dubs. I like to call it hanging with D-dubs because it's like hanging with Mr. Cooper, only cooler. Uh, and and uh, Dan is actually a former teacher as well. So big props to him for that. My mom is a former teacher. Uh, Joe's in the house. What's up, Joe? Daniel Warren Johnson fucks. This is an actual truthful statement. Andrew PCC in the house. Big ups to Andrew. Big thanks as always to Andrew because Andrew does the synopsis for my podcast. I released a new episode of the podcast today direct edition. It is the interview with Sean Honold, Japan book hunter. Uh, I just turned it into an audio with a little introduction and outro. Sean is going to be part of Dave Endercon, which is coming up uh, in a month, a month. Holy shit. Less than a month. Um, Dan knows Sean. So maybe we'll, we'll talk to Dan about uh, his, his Japan trips and his manga influence. And uh, big thanks to Andrew for always writing the synopsis on those. Uh, what's up, Leon? We are live. This is correct. Manu is in the house. The 9.9 .9 newsstand. My former podcast homie. Uh, it came from the newsstand. You can still listen to those episodes. I got the highest tier. Couldn't pass it up. Yeah, I'm gonna bump my. Uh, I'm gonna bump my uh, pledge up for the Kickstarter up to the highest tier before this. Uh, before this Wednesday, because why not? What What's a hundred bucks when you're already spending? You know, two hundred and fifty. Right? Am I right? Am I right? Or am I right? I'm right. Uh, I could go do a synopsis too, but they wouldn't be good or on topic. Thanks, Zach. I appreciate it. Always good to have a backup plan. Mm. Coffee mugs and also Sank Sankowitz shirts will be event available right before Dave Entercon. Uh So, uh, well, you know what? I'll buy your kidney. I'll hold it. But then when you want it back, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to, it's going to be at least 30% more. So, um, and, and ju I just want to say something without going into gory detail or anything. Um, I am definitely trying to make sure that there is going to be more positivity in the YouTube space and just for comics in general. I, you guys know I'm a pretty positive person, but I, I think it's just, uh, a, a lot of stuff that's been happening in the last couple of days. That's really disheartening. And I just want to say that if you need a place to come talk about comics, nerd out, talk about movies, music right here. You know me. That's what I love. And I want to include as many people as I possibly can in the positivity that comes with being an absolute nerd. Coffee mugs. All right. There you go. It, this, uh, there's, I think there's going to be two options, Manu. I think the smaller one, but you know me and you, we like our 16 ounce coffee mugs. Uh, so yeah. And I think there's going to be Dave Vengercon mugs as well. Uh, Andres said, uh, secure my signature edition extreme extremity copy. Yeah. Yeah. Secure your copy. Uh, and we're going to be talking about it soon. 
Um, and, and just a brief uh, synopsis of extremities right here. You can see the trade paperbacks right above my, uh, above my Chrome Dome. And uh, it's a 12-issue epic uh, themes of war, revolution, family, loss, a lot of uh, – there, there's so many different themes in this book. So if you've never read it, well, <laughs> the problem is with the signature edition, it's all original art. There's not going to be any of the word uh, text at all. But I would encourage you to pick up these trades but back the Extremity Signature Edition because they're not going to make them again. That's a one-time one time deal. What up? Sean's in the house? Of course, Jeremy. Jeremy, the, you know, we've been talking the last couple of days and it's just, there's a lot, a lot of negativity. So I, I want to keep it positive and, and, and inspirational. Um, no, there's no negative talk about this. There's just some stuff that's happened in the comic community aside from this. Uh, Manu, we'll, we'll talk later. I'll give you a call. Um, but, but Dan, Dan, DWJ, he is a super positive human being in the, the comics community. You can watch his process. You can watch him draw. You can you can go through the archives of the, the Friday with D-dubs on his YouTube channel. I watch usually two or three episodes a week to get caught up. You know, I'm going backwards. Um, and then he's got director's commentaries on Transformers. And if you haven't read Transformers, holy shit. Uh, and I was never a huge Transformers fan as a kid. I liked them. I owned some of them. But the new Transformers comic reads better than most comics have ever read. Uh, secured my seat. Yep. Yeah, there. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What up, Nigel? Nigel's in the house. What's up, my friend? Uh, so, yeah. Uh, so, if you want to go through DWJ's catalog, we got Extremity right here, the two trades. Uh, his amazing wrestling comic, Do a Powerbomb. You've got his Beta Ray Bill trade right here. Murder Falcon, which is arguably his best book. I know it's his most personal. And then his first book with uh, Donny Cates, Ghost Fleet. And then you've got Transformers. I don't own a copy of Wonder Woman, Dead Earth. And then Space Mullet, I haven't read yet. Uh, and he has a story in Darth Vader, Black, Red, and Blood, or Black, White, and Blood. And then this is the original two-page spread from the first issue of Ghost Fleet, which is kind of like a proto, I'm going to call it a proto uh, uh, Optimus Prime page. We'll call it that. Uh, here are two of my questions for you. How much of Extremity is made on paper? All of it. And what does it he think it separates his Transformers art, makes it so much more energetic, lively than other robot comics. Well, I will try to get to those, uh, Zach. Uh, you, you know, it's a, it's my first time interacting with Dan, so I'm I've got questions here, but hopefully we can get to some of that. Murder Falcon was my first. Uh, Rob said my first. I sought out do a power bomb because I'm a. I grew up watching wrestling and I was a big wrestling fan throughout three decades. So to hear that there was this great um, wrestling comic by by him and i knew his name but i had not read anything yet and so i sought out uh do a power bomb and i fucking loved it i still love it i gotta revisit it but i i, I read the shit out of it hit that like button that's right friends uh watching while ripping some marvel platinum and knew i got some black suit spidey i'm gonna send your way well that's nice to armando very nice of you um space mullet yeah coming out in july it's being reprinted by dark horse and then uh i forget there's one other that i can't remember the name of that he did it starts with an a well he'll tell us uh no pressure Hanson. <laughs> i have a question for dan i probably wouldn't get to ask a person because he always had read about most of his work uh yes yes and and the emotion that's put into his books i i, I do want to talk about that oh all right, we've got uh, Shannon Meehan here. Hi. Hi, Shannon. Just we're live. Come on and say hi. I see Dan in the schedule, so he should be on momentarily. Okay, and Shannon, you work with Skybound. So, any 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 other uh, thing to add about the uh, Kickstarter? We've got uh, th two days left, right? Two days left. No, I'll let I'll let Dan handle it. Um, but yeah, if we can, you know, link to the Kickstarter itself and anything that you post, that'd be amazing. Yeah, it's in everything's in the description, and then I'm going to be bringing up the actual Kickstarter on the screen. Okay, cool. Um, and you know, I'll go off cam and muted during the stream, but um, if you need anything in the chat, feel free to ask. Okay, yeah, yeah, I've got my wrenches here, so they they're here to 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 let me know if there's any important questions to ask. But okay, yeah. awesome. Yeah. Um. So, what do you do for Skybound? You're. Um, I'm our publicity manager, so I lead the PR efforts for all of our comics and editorial releases. 
awesome. Well, might have to bug you to get Otley on and Kirkman on at some point because I would <laughs> love to talk to both of them. Um, you know, Skybound's consistently putting out great stuff from the inception of Skybound. Thank and, you. you know, love to hear that. Yeah. Love to hear it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. we're yeah. already on year 14, which is like absolutely insane. That is. That is pretty insane. I mean, I remember uh, you know, reading Invincible for the first time and and I was just completely blown away. And I still tell people that it is the greatest superhero comic of all time. Like full stop. Full stop. Best superhero in the universe. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ah, uh, Andre said uh, Alabaster was the one I was missing and I couldn't remember the name of it. I was trying to go okay. through his catalog to let people know what's available. Uh, oh, cool. Thank there. you. I'm sure yeah. you will appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've got, you know, the wall of DWJ back here. Love so. it. Love it. <laughs> but um, yeah, so just we're all excited to talk to him. I'm super excited to talk to him and, and uh, you know, really excited to get this this book in my hands. I know, right? Uh, it's it's too bad it's not like, you know, a, a quick thing with Kickstarters where you buy it and then it's it's available really quickly after. Wish it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's there's some, though, that like, you know, you wait two years and then some you wait six months. It just all depends on production and everything. Yeah, hopefully we can get it to you sooner rather than later. Sure, sure. And then uh, hopefully we can get uh, Dan back on after today. So, yeah, yeah, that would be awesome. Important. I know he's, he's a busy man. I watch him you know, making comics on the stream, talking about how, uh, you know, it's it, deadlines are crushing him, but, uh, you know, comics are unforgiving. Comics business. for you, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 Nope. Oh, somebody wants to know why he's so good looking. I mean, it, it, it's his genes. <laughs> his dad, his dad was on stream the other night and, you know, he's a, he's a good looking gentleman. Like, yeah. So. I think, I think that's question number one. <laughs> <laughs> ah, well, speaking of the man, right. the myth, the heavyweight champion of the world, Daniel Warren Johnson. <laughs> All right. I will let you guys hop to it, but I'm around if you need me. All right, Shannon. What's up, Dan? What's up, man? How are you? Good. Nice to have you on. And thank you for uh, taking time out of your super, 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 super busy schedule to come on this Lunatics channel right here. No worries at all. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. The uh, <laughs> We joked around. The first question might be, why are you so damn good looking? That was uh, Prince of Cheese wanted to know that. Uh, you know, I I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, uh, I, uh, well, that's very flattering. Thank you. You know, funny thing about my good looks, if you'll notice, my the bridge of my nose is a little crooked. Yeah, yeah. It goes like this. That is because I accidentally hit myself in the face with my own guitar like six years ago. Were you were you were you twirling it? I was um putting it on my body <laughs> and I hit myself in my own face with it. So it was not even that cool. All right. Well, look, we can't all be as coordinated as you know somebody <laughs> that plays in front of fifty thousand people every night. But uh, That's like, true. I like your. Uh, is that a rucking fat and thing shirt? This is a uh, thing. It's like the Korean. It's that, oh okay. yeah greatest science fiction movie of all time maybe oh, maybe it's really good yeah yeah well um i know your time's pretty limited so why don't we jump into talking about extremity the signature edition the kickstarter which ends in two days is currently at two hundred forty thousand and two hundred fifty two dollars hmm. so we've got um We've got two days left, 250 grand, I think, or it's 275 that releases the last, um, the last, uh, what's that called? The uh, unlocking the, the last uh, 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 tier. Tier. Yeah. yeah. Let's call it a tier. Pledge. Stretch goal. There we Thank go. You. Stretch goal. Oh, geez. Stretch goal. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> so what this is, and I, I obviously want to let you, you explain it, but Extremity was your 12 issue. Uh, epic revolutionary war family story. Um, and this is the uh, story presented in only the original art, correct? Uh, that's correct. Yeah. So no dialogue. So if you've never, if you, oh, let's get back to, let's do this. So if you've never read it before, this is a hard way to read it. But if you are looking to see the amazing original art, this is the way to see it. 
you know i i mean <laughs> yeah there's it's it's it is a niche niche it's a niche thing i think for sure mm -hmm. but it's one that i am really excited about sure um especially when i get artist editions from like other people um and you know if i'm buying like the, an artist edition of something i have read this book a few times already mm -hmm. <laughs> and yes. i'm looking to get into the nitty-gritty of like what made that art sing and a chance to view it in like full color with like the bluishness of the whiteout and mm -hmm. the uh scratchy pencil marks that were left over because the eraser didn't quite do its job that well or even you know i there's plenty of spots where i, I missed erasing yeah <laughs> yeah like in the corners you know this stuff is the thing that i've always really loved about uh kind of behind the scenes looks that like that an artist edition would show so I have quite a few. They're all up there. Yeah, um, yeah. I have a strong shelf in my bedroom that that supports about a hundred pounds of artist editions. <laughs> yeah, like when I was moving them, we moved into this house, and I had like six or so. I have more now. Yeah, and I, you know, you you have like these like terrible like what have I done thoughts. <laughs> like I have all this stuff, but then now that I have my library set up and it's on its shelf in a nice little section, I'm like, mm, I'm feeling like I want to be inspired today. So. I guess it's kind of a bold claim for me to hope that an artist edition might inspire some other people, but that is, I guess, essentially the goal. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's a way, and, and for anybody listening, who's watching the link for the Kickstarter is in the description below, as well as Dan's YouTube channel and everything else you need. Um, but for somebody that collects original art, and I don't know if you can see your double page spread from ghost fleet right here, Hell which is yeah. your, which is your Optimus prime prototype, as I like to call it, but not, you have the you have the proto transformers page. That's right. That's right. Um, but you know, for people that can't afford to collect original art because it is not cheap, um, these artist editions are exactly what we all want. I mean, you get to see it all, and it's like having the original art, except you just can't feel the tactility of the whiteout. That's pretty much it. It's true. I mean, like I. So let's be real. Okay, there is a bit of a. Uh, swashbuckling swagger to saying that you own a cool piece of original art, you know, yes. that is some, you know, hey, and it's not, it's not like a bad thing, you know, it's like we want to point to something in our house and be like, that's the thing. Yep, yep. Um, and I respect that. But just like you, I mean, I wish that I could afford all the original art that I want, but I cannot. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I, I'm trying to get my kids through college eventually. So instead of buying uh a piece of original art now i can get an artist edition for much cheaper and it's still like you said provides that ex for me at least it provides that excitement mm -hmm. and that kind of peering through the i don't know what the word is like is the spec you get to see some of the special sauce yeah. that uh, makes the book the book you know it it gets you that much closer to the seemingly rubbing hands together magic of making uh art and stories happen that is just literally like pencil, ink, and paper. I mean, it's yeah. like very. <laughs> it's I don't wizard, know. I, I get onto this crazy soapbox. I apologize. <laughs> you got to bring me back down to earth, dude. It's wizard. No, it's wizardry. I, I, you know, I recently had uh, Jim Mafood on the channel, and we were talking about the wizardry of Bill Sankevich. And I had uh, Tula Lote and Becky on the channel this past week, Becky Clunan, and talking about wizardry of art, like the little things. And I, you know, I get to watch your processes. Anybody that watches your your YouTube channel and like, you're, you know, you're doing your little flicks, you're doing this, you're doing that, you're scratching, you're rubbing stuff. I mean, you know, and, and so it's almost like this is, you, you know, your YouTube channel has prepared us to see this stuff and know exactly how you did it. Mm -hmm. But still it's really hard to comprehend that, you know, you can do this. And, uh, um, but what you do with the art is, is so is it's like, I don't know. I talk about, how you're one of these people that's doing complete the complete comic experience these days, you know, mm -hmm. writing, drawing, creating stories, the stories though, you're putting so much emotion into it. And obviously, you know, murder Falcon is, is the pinnacle of that, but do a power bomb extremity. Like they're filled with all of this real feeling. And, and so approaching a story like this, how, how long was this gestating for you? Well, uh, you know, when it, when I actually think about relative to like, say, somebody like J.R.R. Tolkien, who like spent 20 years writing 
a lot of times. <laughs> yeah. Not very long at all. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, I had always, I, looking back, I'm trying to enter into my brain space in like 2014, 2015. I was really trying to figure out how I could prove myself in writing and drawing, like a complete story that had a beginning, middle, and end. Mm-hmm. I was trying to figure out how to get a comic book publisher to take a chance on me. Yeah. Um, and I was also looking for things that maybe not necessarily been done before. I mean, obviously, Extremity wears many of its influences on its sleeve, but I remember like floating islands was like a thing in like video games and movies, and I just yeah. hadn't really seen it done super dynamically in comics yet. So I was like, well, there's a little set piece that I could use. And uh, I just watched John. When did John Wick 1 come out? Do you remember? Oh, that's got to be a decade ago. 2013? Yeah, I want to say like 20, 2014 maybe. Yeah, you might be right. Yeah. Well, I was really getting back into revenge movies just after seeing John Wick. <laughs> I kind of got excited, you know, and I was like, well, revenge mo- revenge stories are very easy. Um, sure. They're not very hard to write. And I was kind of looking for something that might be a little simpler in the story department so I could really focus on the art department. Um, cause I am always stretched thin, you know, some piece of the toast is not going to get buttered when I mm. tackle everything. Yeah. Um, but anyway, all that to say, um, I was finding that if I just did a revenge story and if I just used like these visuals of like, you know, like I had the visuals, I had the story, mm-hmm. I had a lot of the concepts, you know, sketched out, I had the vibe and the visual tone, but the story it's like there was like it's like you have like all of the puzzle made except there's like a big chunk right in the middle that like without it the heart of it it doesn't really work yeah um and everything kind of evolves from that one core center which um i found is actually really helpful for me now as i make stories because i'm a little more able to recognize when i don't have that core so what I was doing is I was basically making pitch pages and writing scripts without really having that emotional core. And it wasn't until I really took time to figure that out and be honest with myself and be like, you know, this is not quite working. Mm-hmm. It does work. You know, it's like an engine that works, but does the engine like, does the engine like have a soul? Does it like speak in a way that isn't just uh, one plus one equals two? I was kind of <laughs> looking like one plus one equals three. Is that <laughs> There's like a magical element that only comes from putting, I feel this is just a personal thing. There are plenty of people that will, and storytellers that will agree with, disagree with me, but I feel like there needs to be some sort of element of the soul that needs to be put in, which kind of helps uh, hopefully make the book uh, more than some of its parts. Um, and so Extremity was me trying to do that, especially with the losing of the hand. Yeah, um, yeah, right. Yeah. You're an artist and a guitarist. You can't do either of those with. I know. Without- I just got a big fat synthesizer. I can't play that without hands. <laughs> Man, oh, that, I mean, and and the thing is, is like you get in from the jump, and you're already you're already into these characters, and that's something that shines through all of your work. Like, thank you. I, you know, Powerbomb, and I'm a wrestling fan, and so like that's what drew me to that comic, but not knowing a single thing of what it was about. Same with Murder Falcon. I didn't know that it was like entrenched in, you know, some real heavy emotional stuff, but also like there's a guitar riff playing through that whole book. Totally. Like, you know, and and so it's one of the things that I like to talk about on this channel is the intertwining of of music and creation and then in the things that we, you know, like soundtracks to reading, soundtracks to movies and all that stuff. But um, I'll, I'll try and stay on topic with Extremity for now. We uh, can go anywhere, bro. Is, you know, is there... The extremities in the backdrop. We know why we're here. We can't yeah, tell. exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, but is there a soundtrack to this book? Like, is there something that you would, would suggest listening to while reading Extremity or something that... Uh, a certain album maybe that was heavy on you while you were creating it? Well, John Carpenter's music has always been a big kind of inspiration for me. Um, his Lost Themes records, have you listened to those? I have, yeah, yeah. I at least listened to the first one when it came out. I think it's up to three now. It's four. Oh, it's up to four. So four is coming out soon, I should say. Okay. But in the liner, I had I got the vinyl record of uh, volume one because I loved it so much. I was like, I think this deserves to be mm-hmm. in wax in my house. You know, <laughs> um, I was reading through the liner notes, and 
Carpenter like kind of wrote a little blurb. He's like, you know, I kind of was thinking about new worlds when writing this music and I hope it, I hope your imagination and the worlds that you make in your mind will be, will come to life alongside this music or I can't, that's a paraphrase. paraphrase. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And I was like, Holy cow, this is so awesome. Like this guy is in my head, you know, cause I'm, he was kind of like giving me permission to treat it like my own creation soundtrack. You know? Yeah. So I listened to that music a lot when writing the script for Extremity. Um, and I've continued to do so, you know, it's the lost themes have been on when like writing Transformers, Murder Falcon, Wonder Woman. Um, wow. It's been a huge part of my, you know, creative process is listening to those records. So thank you, John Carpenter. Hell yeah. And, <laughs> Also, back to your like original question, I really didn't start thinking about music and my in conjunction with my art really until like Murder Falcon came along. Mm-hmm. Um, I was so I was kind of like a bedroom guitar player when I was drawing Extremity. I wasn't really taking guitar very seriously. It was something that I would kind of do for fun here and there. Um, and I was like good enough at it that I could hold my own, but I wasn't like actually pushing myself. I was kind of in that like working adult married trying to figure out how to pay my taxes phase (laughs) guitar was like in no way a priority so when murder when i started working on murder falcon it was because i it was a when i started working on murder falcon by that time i had started taking guitar really seriously again and that's a big was a big part of the creative process for murder falcon but that's another story so Man, I, I, I dig it when you you start up your Friday streams and you just got the guitar and you're doing stuff. I'm like, come on, play this. I'm like, and then I'm hearing you play stuff. I'm like, wait, is that this or is that that? And I'm just like, yeah, I, I music's a, a huge part of my life, just like it is yours. Um, That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. And um, so speaking of the big book that you're doing, there's a little thing called Transformers. Transformers. Um, my, you know, I, I grew I'm an 80s kid. I'm an 80s, early 90s kid. I'm a little bit older than you. And I like Transformers. I was not a huge Transformers fan, but damn, if you didn't suck me in immediately, like three pages in, and then like, you know, you're a big wrestling fan. So obviously I'm seeing wrestling moves that Optimus Prime is throwing backwards suplexes, you know, like he's doing the clothesline and all this stuff. And I'm just like, is there, is there a point where you're, you think you'll ever just write a comic that's boring? Because I don't know if it would be possible for you. Like, is there something that you're gestating with right now that you're just like, I'm going to write this one day? Because, like, how do you, you're able to just take these comics, these stories, and just immediately grasp a person? And now I care about Transformers. It's not fair. It's not fair. <laughs> you know what? My art rep, I have an original art rep. His name is yeah, Felix. Felix. And uh, I called, I told him, I'm like, hey, I'm thinking about doing Transformers. What do you think? He's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> that's not gonna sell he can't help it it's his job right it's like yeah. I tell him a new project i'm working on and he's like thinking the numbers in his head you know and i'm like ah and i was like i didn't really i honestly i hadn't thought that much about the original art or anything like that i just wanted right. to do the book and i told felix i was like i just want to do this you know i'm just excited and he was like okay you know he was like i'm not i'm not gonna tell you what to do <laughs> and then like after like it was the first issue had been out for like two weeks he calls me up he's like Where's the best place to get an Optimus Prime toy? <laughs> yeah, you got him. You hooked him. Like you, you turn people that aren't into fans into fans. And you know, it's funny. You know, like the tones of your stories. That, like I said, a lot of emotion. And the Darth Vader story you did. That's the opposite. Like that's emotional the other way. Like that's like. Did you have to go to a different place to write such a dark, dark story? Well, to be totally honest, the like creative prompt that Lucasfilm gave me. Mm-hmm. When they asked me to write and draw a, uh, a Darth Vader comic, they said, we would like this to not be a thinking about violence or like ruminative, uh, you know, like character piece on like on um, Darth Vader. They basically were like, we want this to be badass. Yeah, yeah. Please make it so. I was like, well, they did ask for this. So. They did. They did. So like there's this one line where like there's like a little rebel trooper. He's like, and a transport, and in little tiny letters, he's like, our families. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, 
I just kind of like, I don't know subtle. I, this is a bad thing. This is a self critique. I don't know subtle. I, yeah. when it comes to a fight scene or emotions or whatever, I have this tendency to write and draw like a hammer, you know, and um, maybe that will come back to bite me in the butt or whatever, but I can't help it. The 2D space feels so, uh, not constrictive. What's the word? I just feel like I have to work really hard for it. You know, sure. it's like, right. it's a piece of paper that you're, that you're kind of interacting with. And I'm, I feel like I need to shout. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's engaging the readers a big thing. Like I, I talk about it and, and you know, this is a content creator too. Like it, you have to, you, people have to be engaged because there is too much going on around us at all times now that's mm -hmm. accessible that, you know, and, and I say that about my shows. Like, I don't want to bore anybody because I don't like being bored, you know? So, um, <clears throat> and it's funny you say that because you're, you're kicking ass and taking names. I had, um, I had a couple of comic stores uh, owners on the channel last week or two weeks ago, and it was uh, Aton from Cape and Cal and the two guys that own uh, Comics Place Bellingham. And I know, you know, you, you did a signing at Cape and Cal. Yeah. And we all kind of agreed that, like, I don't want to put a huge burden on your shoulders, but the gospel, you know, like the DWJ stuff is, is really bringing people into shops and keeping them there. That's Nobody, awesome. you know, like people aren't just buying Transformers. They're buying Transformers and then they're looking around and buying some other stuff. Yes. And, and that's, you know, once again, I don't want, you know, it's, I, I know it's a burden, you know, to think about, but comics can use more people like that, putting great emotional stories out with great action. And, you, you know, you and Spicer, you know, it's, it's like Spielberg and John Williams or something, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you I'm going to tell Mike you said that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I feel bad and I've heard you say like, this the extremity the, the signature edition mike's a little left out of it but you know it's just a testament to everything that was created on paper i think you're right and yeah it's kind of a i think of it as like a celebration of the my wife used to work in theater you know and like you can't make mm -hmm. anything in theater without a um a crowd you know yeah and it's like something that i actually really respect about that craft because i'm like i can't do that <laughs> you know um <laughs> But, you know, I think in some ways the uh, signature edition of Extremity is a bit of a celebration of the kind of, um, like we said before, the magic, the wizardry of like mm -hmm. taking something that you are excited about and figuring it out and wrestling with it. Because I did wrestle with that SHIT of Extremity. Yeah. And getting it onto a 2D page and hoping that the world listens. It's intimidating. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, ex I'm really excited to see. There's a specific page that kind of stood out to me that's not an action page although that first uh, double page double page spread is amazing Thank but you. it was the one of the die cut of the tower where yes. that that page to me like you could easily take shortcuts and mm -hmm. not put the detail in there but you look and i couldn't stop looking at that page i like flip the next and i'm just like hold on i, I want to see what's really going on here um did you do, do you still own a lot of it i know you sell a lot through through felix but is it's funny that you don't that you mentioned that page because I actually gifted them that to my dad oh, wow. for Christmas, I think. He just remember I remember he was reading it as it was coming out and he met I think that's issue four. Whenever yeah. that issue came out, he was like, Hey, that page was awesome. And I saved it and I uh sent it to him for Christmas. And he framed it and it's in his office in his studio and he has like those cool frame lights. That oh are, like, wow, shiny yeah, yeah. Right um so I, we that's still in the family. Um, I have three pages from mm -hmm. some scattered around the second arc um, mm -hmm. that nobody was buying. Um, <laughs> you know, they were sitting on Felix's site, and I was like, I think I just kind of want to keep those if we're not going to sell them, or if they're just going to sit there. So yeah. Um, and then we still have all of issue ten, I believe. Oh, okay. Yeah, Felix is hanging on to it. Um, Rainy day. Yeah. And so, so he's, I still have some of it. Um, but yeah, the, bef when it first came out, you know, people were kind of, I, there were definitely, it had its fans for sure, mm -hmm. but it's not like it was this big, you know, hit or anything. Um, it took a little while to get steam and, uh, it's funny cause it's like, how many years has it been now? It's, it's like eight years ago. Yeah. Seven, eight years. It's wow. a long time. Well, I mean, 
you know, that's, and, and I was a little late to the game. I had heard your name. I, you know, and I, I just, it, it was like one of those things I'd pick up a book and go in a stack and then, you know, yeah. get to it. And then eventually I had gotten to do a power bomb and I was just like, Oh my God, you know, it just <laughs> exploded my brain. And, you know, I don't, I don't watch too much wrestling anymore. You know, I was, I was early eighties, you know, obviously grew up with Hogan and stuff, but then the attitude era and then, you know, from what 97 through 2005, I think I went to like 70 live wrestling events uh, or something like that. Yeah. I went to like three rumbles, couple WrestleMania. <laughs> like I was in the shit and, and uh, you know, but, but it never leaves you. You never, you, you know, I went to, uh, I went to go see, I think it was when, what's his name retired for the first time. Yeah. Daniel Bryan. Wow. Um, yeah. I was there ringside and um, you know, I hadn't watched wrestling in a couple years, but I knew who he was. And then it was just like, you never lose the love for watching it. But uh, special stuff, man. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, I know you got to go soon, but I do want to ask a couple other things. Um, your mm-hmm. manga influence, your manga influence in your Japan, you know, like I know you go to Japan on the regular. Um, is that just like it, it? When did that start? Like, where was your love for manga when it started and then your first trip to Japan? Well, I wish I went there on the regular. I've been there twice. I went there in 2015 okay. and I went there last year in November. Nice. Yeah. Um, but I hope to go again. My dad wants to go, so I'm going to take oh, my dad. Oh, that's awesome. That'll be my excuse, you know. Um, but manga, the first manga, I think it was maybe Ranma One Half that was in my library. I remember, like, my young adult librarian lady, the work- person who worked there, she was awesome. Like, really, mm-hmm. a really cool person. And she had her got her finger kind of on the pulse when it came to, like, new things that were coming out in the States. And Dark Horse was publishing a lot of that stuff in the 90s. Yeah. So she was getting that in the, I remember books like uh, uh, Love Hina, the like romance <laughs> comic that I actually really enjoyed. Um, Helsing. Um, there was one random one that I got from a Barnes and Noble that I'm so happy that I recognized its quality because I forgot that I owned it. And then I bought it on Amazon used like 15 years later, however long, because I was like, this looks cool. And I flipped through it. I'm like, oh my God, I used to own this. <laughs> That was that uh, Metal Guardian Faust by Tetsuro oh. Uayama. Yeah. Who also did Lampo, the hypersonic boy. Uh, he did uh, Mitsuyoshi, stuff that has not been translated. Um, Metal Guardian Faust was the only thing they translated. It's not available anymore. It's out of print, but the art is just stellar. The story is, but the yeah. art is incredible. <laughs> right. And it right. had a big effect on me back then. Um, so I was kind of getting anything I could get my hands on. And, uh, but at first it was very slim pickings. This is in like the mid to late nineties. Mm-hmm. So, and then yeah. as things, more things got started getting translated in the early two thousands, I was, I had no money. So I was like trying to figure out how to like read all of my uh, full metal alchemist, the manga. Mm-hmm. Cause that was a great manga. And like, I remember like saving pennies, dude, pennies. <laughs> so I could get volume three of, <laughs> of like, um, um, full metal alchemist. Alchemist, and I yeah. did it, you know, and then I forgot about sales tax and I had to go find some more things. <laughs> well, yeah, it's a, it's a, I know it's a huge influence on a lot of people and it was never in on my radar, but over the last year and a half, um, a lot of, a lot of chats with, uh, with Jim Rugg about manga and then befriending Sean, Japan book hunter, who I've had on the channel. Um, yeah. you know, like he's opened my world up to, to the, you know, like, stuff that i really am interested in like sayonara nippon but then like crazy mm-hmm. horror stuff you know yep. that that uh that you know he's like oh you got to check this shintaro kago story out but it's it's such an interesting world and like their culture being so centered on comics and comics making is so it's so interesting to see so you know i the, the more that american comics makers talk about it i think the more that it's going to open the rest of our you know, minds up to, to this whole other literal world country of, of comics making. I think it's true. And I think like, also you look at like, I don't know, think of like a silver age artist that maybe is not mentioned in everyday conversation in like modern comic zeitgeist. There's tons of them, right? Like Marie I'm having trouble. Um, yeah. Okay. Sure. There you go. Right. Yeah. So those, those like that exact same kind of like level and vibe and where they were in history exist in Japanese comics. Yeah, that we don't know about you know like we know like like Full Metal Alchemist and like um, Jujutsu like Kaisen and all like there's all yeah. these A list titles you know that yeah. get fed by 
what you know mo what the modern kind of popular thing is right now which is not bad I, it's not a bad thing but it's the simple fact that like there were a-listers and b-listers and c-listers that were incredible in japan in like the 60s and 70s yeah. and 80s early 80s that are completely gone i mean they don't really either they don't make comics anymore or they they're doing something else or yeah or and on. sean over at japan book hunter is fighting that good fight you know he's like he's giving me new questions to ask like things i didn't even know like uh battle slave Luza, you know with a metal <laughs> yeah. arm in the fighting or, pits or for me it's uh uh i have a cursed face on my back you know like <laughs> this shit is so, it's so wild and it's like it's it it does it expands the palette it expands the things in the way you look at things and you know he's somebody that I, i'm glad i befriended and you know he's like dude whenever you come out to japan i'll take you hunting for books and i'm like yeah I, i'm gonna try and go out there if this not this year next year but um yeah and and it's just you know and, and one of the things about this channel and about talking to creators is i want to learn more and i mm -hmm. want to be able to share that with people so that we're all not sitting there stale or bored or complaining about the comics that are coming out and you know i i push back against all that and i love that you put a lot of emotion a lot of your personality in the comics and one of the things and and, and bring it back to extremity one of the things i love about it you know i'm i listen to punk music and metal music since i was a kid so i've you know i push back at the at the system in general and the quote remember why you fight really you know th that's the the theme one of the themes throughout the book and it's just so strong to me and it just you know it's one you know was that that specific line was that something that like came to you quick or it was in the middle or towards the end is it something that was just you wrote it down and it was nothing special um oh man dude i'm so sorry it is totally the last one <laughs> <laughs> It's okay. I was like, I was like, should I lie? Should I lie? <laughs> no, we're gonna we're gonna be honest. Right, right. You know, like, but it's a great I mean, line. It is a great. Yeah, line. it is. I definitely come up came up with that on the fly. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, that sometimes the simplest nondescript things become the most important things. You know, like some, you know, the simplest line in a movie becomes a catchphrase. You know, or or a song that somebody wrote like Kurt Cobain wrote in 30 seconds becomes smells like teen spirit, you know, like yeah. you, you never know what's really going to uh, hit people at the core. That's very um, true. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I know you've got a super busy day, but I really would love to have you back on for more in depth. And I know you're busy. I know you got your swing classes. I know you got your, <laughs> your I know you got your YouTube channel. You got kids, a wife, you've got uh, deadlines, but I, you know, <laughs> I would love to make time for for a more in depth chat because, um, I I love pushing the medium on this channel and it 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 just makes me happy to talk to people about creativeness and inspiration and all that stuff. Well, so. stay tuned. We might be reaching out because I have more books on the horizon than we're going to need somebody to talk to about. Yeah, and you got a sci fi epic that you're working on that you won't tell anybody about, but I'm excited. Not a soul, but it's coming. <laughs> well, um, we've got. Two days left for the Kickstarter. The link's down below. This video will be up on my channel forever. Uh, Dan's channel, Daniel Warren. Uh, what is it? It's Daniel Warren Johnson 1, right? That's the uh, YouTube. Oh, yes, I think so. But if you just look up good Daniel Warren, you'll find me. Yeah, hanging with D. I like to call it, like I said, I like to call it hanging with D-dubs. It's just, uh, you know, it sounds like a sitcom starring you. <laughs> but um last question i'll ask you best wrestling match ever that you can remember that i was at or that I just in, in general no just in general that like something when I, you... I'll, I'll, I don't know if this is my, my favorite or the best but um kenny omega versus naito g1 climax 27 uh that final kenny omega that... is the shit Dude, he is and you know naito's knees weren't as bad then yeah um, and it was just a special time, and that match is so great, and the crowd is so invested. When I'm trying to get people to watch wrestling, I, I give them that match. All right, all right. I I go classic uh, first hell in the cell, Taker oh, Taker yeah? Mankind. I mean, I remember watching that on pay per view, and just like Jr., I thought he was dead. My God, <laughs> he's dead. You know, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I, I it never you know like I watch that and I still cringe hard. I'm just like, oh come on, Mick. You know, yeah, 
<laughs> but uh, I, I really appreciate it. I'm glad I was able to get you on for for a little bit. And uh, you know, I think uh, I think you know you, you would find a good time. I, I I know me and you would have a good long depth in depth conversation. So whenever we can arrange that, let's 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 talk music and and wrestling and comics. Sounds good, brother. All right, man. Enjoy. And uh, should I bring Shannon back on? I don't know if she's still here, but Shannon, thank you. Uh, and and you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna stay live for a little bit and talk to my people. But uh, I just want to say thank you to you both. Really appreciate it. Thanks, thank dude. You, I'm off to my next one. I'll see you later. All right. All right. Bye. See you later. All right, Shannon. Thank you. Well, everybody, that was that was awesome. Let's take a look at the Kickstarter again. Let's bring that up on the screen. And uh, take a look where we're at here. So um, I backed it. I got. I, I'm gonna reback it at the highest level. I backed the um, the two hundred fifty dollar one. But let's take a look at the uh, rewards here. All right. So you get. Uh, I got the two hundred fifty dollar one, but you can just do a thank you card. Um, you can go with the hundred and fifty dollar one, which gives you the uh, signature edition hardcover. Uh, digital thank you card and then the wallpapers the 350 is the ancient dark that gets everything uh the two hardcovers a print a tip in sheet um so there's not too many levels of it but if you can afford it like this is the type of thing yep daniel warren johnson fuck the world or for the win this was great um he's awesome um and and if this is not your thing let me just say you cannot go wrong reading the new Transformers. I was being deadly honest. I was being as honest as I could. Or I have never been a huge Transformers fan. I'm not a Transformers hater, but not a fan. Uh, and that three pages in, three pages in, I was hooked. Um, Murder Falcon is his most. This book is his most emotional. Um, if you don't feel something, you might want to see a psychiatrist. I'm just kidding. Like this is, this is an amazing story. Um, same with transformers. You do not have to be a wrestling fan to dig, do a power bomb. Uh, it's just a, like he, the way he draws action, the way he writes action. Um, it's, it's top tier creating. So ghost fleet. It's interesting. Cause ghost fleet, uh, Ghost Fleet's like um it starts as what you think is going to be like a heist kind of cargo heist move uh, book and it goes in a wild direction. So this is his first book with Donny Cates. Now they talk about it in the intro. Um they were cut short. Like I think it was supposed to be 12 issues ended up being 10 or something like that. So the story unfortunately has to like cut a big corner. And just goes from like, you know, like 40 to a thousand miles an hour. Um, but I enjoyed reading it. Um, and if you read the introduction and you go in knowing that um, that this was cut short, it becomes a little bit more understandable that the story kind of, it doesn't go out of whack. It just, it has to amp up quicker than it was probably supposed to. Um, he has, both Peach and DWJ have stories in this and um dan's story is a vader one that's uh it's just pretty brutal and uh so if you want to read a couple of great vader stories pick that up um but yeah transformers is fantastic extremity is an it's a I, i'm i'm hesitant to say it but it's kind of an it's a it's an epic opus um and then his beta ray bill is the best beta ray bill story ever told second to maybe walt simonson's introduction um, and then, uh, I haven't read dead earth yet. That's the one that I really need to read, which is uh wonder woman. Um, yeah, this was great. This was so much fun. Yeah. His, uh, his Vader story. Oh, that's right. Drastically. He wrote that, but he didn't draw it. Um, and I did not read that and I need to, that's, is that the same artist that's taking over for transformers for him? So, so Dan is no longer the artist of transformers in the second arc, but he is the writer. So it's still going to have that, those great beats. He's just, you know, I, I want to get in more into the storytelling aspect of his, his, you know, the way he creates comics, but he hits story beats like almost nobody else. And, uh, um, you know, I, I can't recommend his work more. Yeah. This is uh you know, beta Ray bill. It's a, it's a space opera, but it's a good space opera. Um, 
yeah, this is this is short but great read. Four issues, I believe. And then, um, yeah, and then Space Mullet's going to get reprinted in July. So maybe, you know, maybe we'll have him on when Space Mullet comes out in trade. Uh, I'd love to get him for Dave Endricon, but that's probably unlikely because it's a weekend and it's live. But we'll we'll see. We'll see. Um, I've got two dead Earths. That's two. That's two dead planets, and one will will murder. Oh, with a murder falcon sketch. That's pretty cool. Gideon is the artist. Dave, that's me. Um, but this was fun, and, and obviously, I you know always want more time with with creators like him but uh but uh you know he's on a press blitz today to wrap up the uh the signature edition and get that kickstarter to 275,000 so we can get extremity t-shirts um okay good to know Sean I'll I'll pick it up soon enough um like I said it's his stuff is is readily available except for space mullet and um and that first one that I couldn't remember the name of with the a uh uh oh god I already forgot it. Oh, Alabaster. I don't know if that's still available anywhere, but um, I'll probably end up uh, closing the stream out in about nine minutes just to make it a clean hour. And um, But yes, if you are watching this within the confines of the next two days up until March 27th, you can back the Kickstarter. Otherwise, you're SOL, which is, uh, is shit out of luck. Sorry. Sorry for being so frank, but it's true. No, I'm Dave, not Frank. Um, wow. All right, so look at that. In the time that we've been live, we've we've bumped it up at least a thousand dollars. So that's great. Um, so yes, uh, I'll be back selling books on Wednesday, right here on the channel. Uh, stream for the rest of your natural lifespan. No, um, and then this Friday, uh, not live, but I am doing an interview with Mike Allred. And then this Sunday, I will drop the Chip Zdarsky interview. And then I'll probably hold the All Red interview for another week and do a digging video or something like that. I feel like uh, we need I, – I, I'm, I'm thinking about dropping more videos per week, but it, I don't know. I don't know if I should. It's a lot of things I'm thinking of. Uh, Corona is picking up Transformers. Okay. That's who's picking it up. Yeah, I wasn't sure who was doing the art. I couldn't remember his name, but I did see what Dan showed off on the channel um, was was pretty inspiring to see that the Corona's Corona's art. Rob, look, I'd love to. I'd love to. I'm just doing too much as it is. You know, I thought about it. I had a conversation with Dave Korea today about trying to do more lives and, and make this a community where people can be here every day. But just being one person, it's too tough, uh, you know. It's, it's a little too tough, but you know, with the podcast, the live show, the drop every Sunday, you know, if you want to join the discord, there's always people chatting up in there. Um, you know, yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Adrian, I'm going to be on Adrian's show next week, actual Dracula. So, so give him a follow. Um, and, uh, I know you were half joking, Rob, but I know you also are like me. You want to be able to 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 have a, a space to talk about this stuff on a daily basis even if it's in the comments and i get it we're we're all we're all hurting right now um but this community look i love everybody that's involved in this y'all know that i'm trying to be as accessible as possible i love conversing with everybody um sometimes it's 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 a lot in here but doing a lot of work and i'm just trying to you know, you know, I'd like to, i me and Sean are going to do something soon. Japan book hunter and his channel. He's going to be selling at Dave Endricon. Manu's going to be selling at Dave Endricon and Maddie's going to be selling at Dave Endricon. Um, and then, uh, there's some other stuff that I haven't, uh, disclosed yet that hopefully is in play. <laughs> there we go. Sean putting the exclamation part on it. We don't care about your mental health, Dave. <laughs> Live, live stream your life. Yatta! <laughs> but um, seriously, though, if you have the money to back the Kickstarter, please do. If you don't, pick up one of Dan's books. You know, I will say this. His YouTube channel every Friday, Hanging with D-Dubs, as I call it, um, it's a great place to just chill out for like 45 minutes and his stream is great. Rob's always in there. I know I see Adrian in there sometimes. And, uh, I, you know, I see some of you in there. 
So, so, you know, take a gander at his YouTube channel. If you're an artist and you're not following, or if you're just interested in the process of art and you're not following his channel, you should, because he just draws. That's all he does on the channel. He draws, he plays guitar. He draws, he plays guitar. You know, I want to watch you sleep. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Then it just got creepy. Oh, thanks trip. Yeah, we got, I got some things in the works and look, don't let the shitty people in the comics world get you down. Don't let the negativity get you down. You're not going to ever find that kind of hate for me. And you're never going to find out that I did anything bad that y'all don't know about. You know, like the time I sold a fake game, you sticks to a card company. You're never going to find out about that without me saying, you I'm going to say, wait, did I just say that? Um, <laughs> you got it, Andres. <laughs> All right. Well, look, I, I appreciate it. <laughs> Sleeping tape is overrated. Sorry, Dave. You the camera. <laughs> All right. Well, now that this stream has turned into the Truman Show, you guys want to know what I ate for lunch? I had a um, turkey, apple, and brie sandwich on a French baguette that I made myself. And after this, I'm going to go make myself a cup of coffee because this is water. And I'm going to have a scone. I'm going to have a blueberry scone. And I'm going to bag and board all the comics in these short boxes here because they're all for sale this wednesday on west coast wednesday if i got a lot of cool stuff i just bought a collection this weekend and uh yeah so chip zadarsky like i said uh chip zadarsky interview you guys are gonna love it if you don't like chip for some reason then maybe you won't but before we get to the chip interview i really need my 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 faithful dave angerinos to if you haven't watched the becky clune and tula lote interview i dropped this weekend let's get that Let's get that boosted up a little bit. Give some support to them. The new issue, the last issue of Somna comes out in two days. Chip Zdarsky uh, and Fraction released the Sex Criminals collection this week also. So pick that up if you've never read that. You know, I, I know I started this channel um, based on digging through comics and all that stuff, but I really enjoy interviewing creators and and talking about books and and you know getting the word out there and i'm gonna have some of my indie comics friends um appearing at the avenger con so uh and and you know i'm really excited to have some of you guys on the channel too rob i was going through one of my boxes yesterday and lo and behold there were the, yeah you know I, I i found i think i have two sets of the ones that rob's uh stories in let's go through the collection page by page <laughs> I think I got drunk with Becky like 10 years ago. She is wonderful. Yeah, I, I never had a chance to drink with her, but um, yeah, she was she's always been nice and and fun to talk to. And both uh both Tula and Becky will be coming back probably. I, I mean, maybe I can get them on for Dave Endricon, but uh we were, we're gonna have another chat after Somna issue three comes out and it wraps up so we could talk spoilers. And but but we're gonna focus on talking about music and movies and stuff like that that you guys know that. I love engaging with artists and people on, you know, the music and movies that inspire them or what they like, or, you know, talking about soundtracks for reading and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah. Um, well, I don't drink anymore. It's not that celebrated 10 years, uh, sober last week. Did I hear about the, yeah, yeah, Nick. And, and I, 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 that's what I kind of am elaborating about you know, the negativity in the community and stuff like that. So I don't want to spend any time talking about it right now, just because it's been distracting me, uh, you know, completely. Um, but yes, um, direct edition. If you're not listening to the podcast, like I said, the Japan book hunter interview, uh, is out there. If you just want to listen to it and you didn't watch it. Um, I recorded a new episode yesterday. The Zadarsky interview is out Sunday. I'm really excited. Like chip's great he is ridiculous and funny and uh you know i just i just want to keep engaging with everybody on on every level in a positive way so i'm just keep your head up if you're part of the kayfabe community you guys are all welcome to hang out here and talk books here i'm not you know as well versed in you know comics making but i i do know how to talk about them and um you know it, it just is uh you know, everybody's, everybody's welcome here and nobody will be 
I don't know, look down. I don't know what to say about it. I don't have my thoughts in the proper place. But anyway, I want to say thank you to everybody for watching. I want to say thank you to DWJ for coming by and for Shannon for making this happen. And I want to thank all of you. Uh, and and if you back the Kickstarter, if you didn't still, I appreciate you hanging out. Um, you're all fucking great. And uh, let's just, you know, keep your heads up, stay positive, make more comics, read more comics, and let's talk about more comics. Um, so everybody... Take care. Have a great day. Um, Direct Edition podcast is uh, the new episodes come out when I'm done with them, usually every seven days. Um, so the Japan Book Hunter one was today, and then the next episode will be probably next Monday. So um, thank you, Precode, and thank you, Jeremy. I appreciate it. And uh, Leon, appreciate you too. So no fanfare. We're just going to hit goodbye on the stream, but I'll see everybody Wednesday night for Where's Ghost Wednesday. Oh, yeah. Give me fuel. Give me fire. Give me top of top of high. Yeah. <laughs>